So seeing the presence of a quorum, I will call the meeting of the Town Council Committee on Outreach, Communications, and Appointments to order at 6.01 p.m. Uh, so the purpose of this meeting tonight is to conduct interviews for appointment to the Planning Board. Uh, this is the first time in Amherst history that we've ever done Planning Board interviews publicly. Um, and so before we begin, I wanted to provide a little bit of history and context uh, for those of us who are in this room and also those of us who might be watching the Amherst Media videotape later on of this meeting tonight. Uh, so under the previous form of government from 1954 to 2018, the planning board was appointed by the town manager with approval by the select board. Uh, interviews, if any, were conducted by the town manager in private uh, typically without the presence of an elected official, and the names of applicants were never publicly disclosed. With the transition to our new form of government, with the adoption of the new town charter in 2018, the planning board appointing authority became the town council. This committee, Outreach, Communications, and Appointments, or OCA, was charged with making recommendations to the town council regarding all appointments by the planning board. We first acted on this part of our charge last spring when we recommended the appointment of four members of the planning board. Uh, under that process, our former chair, Sarah Swartz, conducted the interviews of all applicants in private with select town staff. Tonight, we're trying something new. Uh, over the past fall, OCA developed a new process to recommend appointments, part of which shifted interviews from private interviews to public interviews conducted during a public meeting. As I stated, this is the first time ever that, public, that planning board interviews have been done publicly and represents a new step uh, and demonstrates a greater amount of transparency in our local government. To provide some context on how we got here tonight, in early October, we had a resignation from the planning board creating a vacancy. On October 21st, the town council posted a vacancy notice to solicit applications from residents who are interested in serving on the planning board. In late December, I, as chair of OCA, contacted all applicants who applied to be on the planning board over the past two years, from October 21st, 2017, until present. No applicants were screened out beforehand, and every person who applied was given the opportunity to interview. The three applicants who are here tonight are those that confirmed that they remain interested in serving on the planning board. Uh, they are Robert Greeney, Douglas Marshall, and Jacob Hirsch. Prior to tonight, OCA developed interview questions and selection guidance. Those were both shared with the applicants in advance of tonight's interview and are publicly available on the town's website. Tonight's interviews will be used by OCA to make a recommendation to the town council regarding appointment by the planning, uh, to the planning board. Um, the council will then vote on that recommendation and potentially appoint a new member to the planning board. Regarding the format for tonight's interviews, all three applicants will be interviewed as a group. Per an earlier vote of OCA, I as chair will be asking all questions. My colleagues on OCA are here tonight to listen, but will not be asking questions. Uh, after I ask a question of the group, each applicant will be given an opportunity to respond. Per an earlier vote by OCA, each applicant will be given up to three minutes to respond to the question. If you start to go over three minutes, I will interject and ask you to finish your sentence. Uh, I will rotate the order of responses with each question. Uh, I would like to ask now if the three of you have any questions about the format of the interviews before we begin. Good to go? All right. Uh, the interviews are the sole agenda item for this meeting tonight. Uh, there will be no other business of this committee conducted during this meeting. Town Council Rules of Procedure 10.5H give discretion to the chair during special committee meetings as to whether or not to allow public comment. There will be no public comment period during this meeting. This meeting is being taped by Amherst Media and the broadcast will be available later on their website um, for viewing by the public. So with that, I want to thank uh, Mr. Greeny, Mr. Marshall, and Mr. Hirsch uh, for being here tonight and for their interest in serving our community on the planning board. Um, so let's begin. And so our first question, and we will start with Mr. Greeny, and then Mr. Marshall, and then Mr. Hirsch, uh, is why are you interested in serving on the planning board? So we'll start with Mr. Greeny. <clears throat> During my 26 years living in Amherst, I have always been actively engaged in the maintenance and enhancement of many aspects of our shared community. My engagement with government has been primarily through town meeting, but I have also participated widely 
in public elections, uh, running for select board, school committee, charter commission, and town council. My current choice for civic engagement is to serve as a member of the planning board. Our built environment is an important expression of our collective community vision and values the constructed landscape in which we interact and live. More than any other body, the planning board coordinates and facilitates our collective effort to create the physical structures that best, need, that best meet the aspirations and needs of our community as a whole. It does this through the coordination, creation, maintenance, and implementation of the master plan. That needs be maintained as our best effort at capturing the collective vision and will of the town. Besides the master plan update and implementation, I would like to bring a fresh set of ideas to our collective effort to create a broad spectrum of housing options for our citizens and promote economic vitality of our town. Housing options that enhance the beauty of our built environment with a good blend of classic New England architecture and tasteful, well-coordinated contemporary design. Housing that spans a broad range of size and form. Recently, Maria Chow at the Planning Board Zoning Subcommittee introduced a new concept called the missing middle. Duplexes, quadruplexes, clustered cottages, courtyards, et cetera. That needs our attention. This overlaps an idea that I have been researching and promoting for quite some time. How do we encourage and promote small and medium scale incremental organic renovation and growth expressing a collective culture of architecture, architectural diversity and beauty? Affordability through owner occupancy is another powerful tool for expanding the housing options and uh, for uh, working class folks. Additionally, I would like to see more widespread engagement and coordination of collective efforts in planning and initiatives. It would be beneficial to include strong public engagement in maintaining and implementing the master plan. Inclusion of diverse views, inclusion of multiplicity of colliding, competing, contradictory, and complementary ideas dynamic, productive synthesis of those opposing ideas. Thank you. Mr. Marshall. I have long thought that serving on the planning board would be an interesting experience, as I would welcome learning about and influencing the local process that produces the zoning and other constraints which I've worked under as an architect in multiple communities. I believe that I could be a helpful member of the board because of my professional experience and personal characteristics. I am a longtime architect, somewhat more recent planner, and uh, I'm very thorough and detail-oriented. Over the years that I've lived in Amherst, acquaintances have on several occasions suggested I consider volunteering for this board. Prior to now, my professional and personal obligations left little time to do so but I am now in a place where I think I could make the commitment required to do that. I also think that with the new town council, now is an especially important time for as many people to volunteer to assist with the new town government as possible. I am happy to be part of that if that's your choice. With the planning board beginning discussion of the master plan update, I think this could be an especially interesting period on which to serve on the board. I am also interested in being a part of a conversation in town about our community's carbon emissions and its contributions to climate change, especially as they relate to upcoming development in the town. This is a time when we need to be thinking about the long-term future of our town and our society. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Um, my wife and I moved to Amherst in 1980, so I feel like I'm a long-term resident. Um, I grew to love the town, raised a family here. Uh, my kids went through the public school system. Um, I participated in a number of civic uh, ways through coaching and other things. 
um, through the town, um, although none in any official capacity, um, either through town meeting or an elected capacity. Um, and now I feel like I'm willing to do that. I've seen a number of changes over the years. Some I think are great changes and others I'm not as fond of. And I feel like as a member of the town uh, planning board that I would have some uh, say and direction of how we evolve into the future. Um, Jonathan Tucker once told me that um, the future comes whether you plan for it or not. So you might as well plan. Great, thank you. Uh, so our second question, and we'll begin this one with Mr. Marshall, is what is your relevant expertise and or experience? So as I mentioned in the answer to the first question, I am a registered architect in Massachusetts. Uh, I've been, uh, I was first in private practice in the Boston area for about 25 years, mostly working on college and university higher education projects. Uh, during that time, I was a designer, I was a project manager, and I oversaw construction. Um, since uh, about 2010, I've worked here in Amherst for the University of Massachusetts, and I'm on the campus planning staff. Um, and I also served as 18 months as interim director, uh, which uh, ended about a year and a half ago. Um, during my time on campus, uh, obviously I've been looking at the campus itself a lot. I've also been involved in the campus's off-campus leased office space, which has exposed me to the local real estate market and sort of the issues associated with leasing commercial space uh, in the area. Uh, I also have served as, the, uh, as, as one of the UMass representatives to the University Town of Amherst Collaborative, UTAC uh, group, uh, during the time that that was in uh, act, was active, I was on the housing subcommittee, and um, you know that was part of my experience. Uh, finally, uh, as an architect, I've been familiar with the LEED uh, rating system for sustainable buildings, and as I'll uh, talk about in a later question, I'm familiar with the Living Building Challenge system as well for uh, building sustainable buildings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hirsch. Well, I feel like um, my contributions are more as a longtime resident of Amherst rather than in a professional capacity. I filled out a citizen involvement issue, and I feel like I'm a citizen who is representing a number of other citizens in town rather than an expert involvement committee or involvement form. So I can't say that I have professional expertise. I know something about construction through my past, but I wouldn't say that I'm an expert at that at all. Uh, my wife is a small business owner and has an office downtown Amherst, so I hear a lot of scuttlebutt from her about various changes in town, and, um, and I see my own experience as I've interacted with the various changes in town. So I feel I have um, worthwhile input from that perspective. Thank you. Mr. Greeny. Hey, thank you. <laughs> um, I like working with people, and um, I like committees. <laughs> I enjoy the challenge of finding common ground in an arena of competing and conflicting ideas. At Holyoke Community College, where I'm a physics professor, I have served on many committees 12 years on the Long Range Planning Committee, six years on the College Senate, six years as Physical uh, Science Department Chair. I also spent five years as President of the Board and Co-Director of Mud Pie Potters at Leverett Crafts and Arts in Leverett, and three years as a member of the Board of Directors of North Amherst Community Farm when it first started. The challenge of meaningful committee work is to find balance between engagement, inclusion, and expression and efficiency. There is a skill in practice in knowing how to turn disagreement that is going nowhere into a productive synthesis of competing ideas. Because of my work in physics, I am comfortable with numbers, graphs, charts, tables, statistics, spreadsheets, 
diagrams, and figures. In physics, we find patterns and structure and meaning where it may not be obvious at first. When you think of the planning board, you may think builder, architect, urban planner, lawyer, zoning expert, etc. Why not artist, musician, teacher, plumber, poet? Would you want the planning board to be all musicians? Of course not. <laughs> Anyone on the planning board must be willing to engage the necessary technical expertise needed, but in my opinion, the regulatory function of the planning board should by all means be secondary to the planning, master planning function, coordinating, aspiring, focusing, and producing results that represent the entire town, the entire community. Thank you. Our third question, and we'll start with Mr. Hirsch. So what important perspective do you feel you bring to this body? Um, roughly five years ago, um, I was president of the Safe Historic Cushman um, Stop the Retreat organization. Um, we were threatened by a proposal for a large development in the Cushman Forest Reserve and uh, neighbors very quickly came together. We were very concerned, number one, because it wasn't zoned appropriately, that didn't seem to bother anybody. Um, and number two, it was a proposal for roughly 800 uh, students to be crowded into uh, what they termed were um, homes, but they were actually separate apartments um, spread throughout the Cushman Forest. Um, it was um, an ordeal in organizing. Um, we approached it as a way to try and educate the town about what was proposed. I feel like after um, a long uh, and arduous task, we actually convinced the planning board through multiple meetings um, to uh, reject the proposal. Before they did that, um, the proposal was withdrawn because it became obvious from the last meeting at the planning board that it was just um, something that was an impossibility. Uh, we had had to hire an engineer to convince the planning board that what was proposed was something that was um, physically almost impossible. There were things, um, the land was so rough um, and they were planning on doing so much construction there that they were going to have 20 and 30 foot cliffs um, that um, I remember at one time um, Ms. Brestrup pointed out that the cliffs would be about the same height as the Bank of America building across the street. Um, anyway, so it was um, an ordeal that required us to learn about zoning, it required us to learn about development, and it required us to learn about economic opportunities. And I think that the town is better off because of our efforts. And it also got me to see the, um, the purpose of the planning board and um, got me interested in serving on it. Um, I've also been very involved in a number of different communities, uh, or committees at the university. I don't think anybody can work at the university for 35 years without getting involved in a lot of committees there. Um, in particular, um, I've been Secretary of Grievances with my uh, union and um, have served um, in a number of union committees and in other types of committees as well. So I feel very comfortable with committee work and I feel um, pretty well educated to serve on the planning board. Thank you. Mr. Greeny? We're on question three, right? Correct. <laughs> um, I'm a scientist and an artist. I am practical and I am visionary. My signature over all my work and campaigns has been the mantra of inclusion, participation of a wide cross-section of persons, and the inclusion of diversity of ideas that leads to better outcomes. 
I will bring this perspective to the planning board in a manner that a greater diversity of Amherst residents will feel their voices is included in planning and zoning policy and practices. There are many people in this town that feel disenfranchised by the loss of town meeting. I have consistently gotten about 35% of the total vote in townwide elections. When I tell people I applied for this position on the planning board, many of them say, you'll never get appointed to that board. I am widely seen as a representative of a viewpoint that is perceived as being absent from the planning board. We see a big surge in large-scale development projects by a small number of participants. I do not oppose that in principle. If there is a market for expensive rental units, then that need should be met. In my opinion, the placement of those units is not consistent with what a large se segment, perhaps even a majority of the, of the people of this town want. There is a big untapped potential for meeting the huge need, housing needs, uh, for a much broader range of housing, by a much broader range of housing options. That's provide, that that provided by large-scale development projects we are seeing. The Congress for New Urbanism has a publication called Public Square. They're suggesting uh, that there are many projects on a smaller scale that can meet the needs, that the, the large level of housing needs. So let me read from their publications, the modern, the modern regulatory system shuts people out who do not have the capital to hire development attorneys, engineers, and architects to navigate the difficult process. According to Brian Falk, who directs the Project for Lean Urbanism, one answer is pink zones. They call it pink zones, where they lighten the red tape for small-scale projects. Um, The, uh, on the streamlining side, the project team overlooks um, the hurdles that prevent people from building. For example, accessory dwellings, which should be legal and affordable from a bureaucratic standpoint. That should be the same should apply to owner-occupied duplexes and triplexes and quadruplexes. Um, all of which- I'm gonna have to ask you to okay. wrap up. Okay. Um, I'll just stop there. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Marshall. So the perspectives that I bring, uh, first as a Amherst resident, as a parent of an Amherst student at, in the public schools, as a member of the church here in downtown, uh, First Congregational Church, uh, and as an employee of the University of Massachusetts. Uh, my long, I have a long interest in the built environment, mostly manifested through my profession, um, and through that profession and awareness of how uh, the various regulations of towns and uh, uh, other governmental entities influence the built environment. <clears throat> I've been here long enough to have followed the conversation about various development initiatives and uh, gotten a sense of the values and the different perspectives in town, but I've been here actually short enough time that I kind of remember my first impressions of the town when I got here, which I think are somewhat at odds with the way the town sees itself. Mm. Um, I have experienced uh, several projects in town, one through uh, being a part of the building committee at the Hitchcock Center when they did their new building. Uh, also as a member of uh, the building committee at the First Congregational Church when we were doing a renovation and through my UTAC involvement. I'll stop there. Thank you. Our fourth question is tell us about an experience you have had collaborating with a group and we'll start with Mr. Greeny. Okay. Um, I hope that my reputation in Amherst is one of collaboration. <laughs> Over a year ago now, we had our first, town, um, our first town council election. I recall a spirited election where 
differing opinions were generally respected, although there may have been some unpleasant exchanges. After the election was over, Lynn Grissmeyer organized a unity breakfast at Amherst College. I recall that more than half of the candidates attended. I was reluctant to go, not because of my anger or resentment over losing, only that I thought an open-ended social gathering might not help me feel unity. I suggested to Lynn and others that we have a period of formal gathering of all attendees and we discuss our thoughts and experiences of the election and how we might move forward in unity. The idea met with mixed reactions. Some supported the idea, others had doubts, understandably were less outspoken. I went to the breakfast, I asked Lynn, what might we do? She said there was mixed reaction to your idea, but feel free to offer the idea and suggest optional participation. I met with two other people who thought it to be a good idea. With support from them, I made the following suggestion. I offered at the end of the breakfast that those who were willing gather in a circle and share their thoughts and experiences of the campaign and election process. By the time we started, a few people had left, but there were still about 13 people, or about half of the total 26 candidates that ran for the 13 positions. I can only speak from my experience, but in fact, it was a unifying experience. I heard people speak with thoughtfulness, consideration, and humility. Although optional, everyone chose to speak and everyone listened. At least in those moments, I felt a genuine recognition of the importance of inclusion and unity. I take this orientation wherever I go. I offer the, op I offer the opportunity if offered the opportunity, I will bring this practice to the planning board. Thank you. Mr. Marshall. So I have, as I mentioned, I've worked on a couple of building committees and part of UTAC while I was here. Um, I, was gonna, I, was, I will talk about my experience at Hitchcock Center. In 2013, I was approached by the center and invited to join their building committee. They were starting work with their architect and were seeking members who had experience in the building industry. I support the Hitchcock's mission and was interested to learn about the living building challenge system under which they were going to design their building. I ended up becoming the chair of that committee and also joined their board as I thought my effectiveness on the building committee would be enhanced by an awareness of what was going on at the board level. There were about 10 members on the committee consisting of the director and one staff member, several current and former board members, and a couple of other interested people, most of whom did not have much experience with design and construction and the uh, intricacies of those sorts of processes. We met at least once a month, first with the architects during the design phase and then with our part-time project manager, Chris Riddle, and the construction manager as well. During the three years I was involved on this committee and the board, my primary role was providing advice to the center's director and supporting her as we navigated the project process with the architect, project manager, and construction manager, town, and Hampshire College. However, as committee chair, I also helped with the meeting agendas and tried to keep meetings on topic and moving along. I did my best to be prepared for meetings and on time. Through the course of the project, I also attempted to mediate between various people and their disparate points of view on the decisions we had to make, some of which were contentious. Together, we made it through with a building and a site we could be proud of, and a, and a building that I think the town of Amherst can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hirsch. Okay. Well, again, I'd like to talk to, about my experience with Save Historic Cushman. Um, it was something that, as an abutter, we got noticed of um, February 19th in, um, I believe it was 2011 or 2012, and um, no, 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 it was before then. It was about 2008. Um, but at any rate, um, we, our neighbors quickly got together and we all formed an organization. We did research and found out that we preferred to be a loosely knit neighborhood organization rather than any formal 401 or, or sorry, 501 um, type organization. And um, 
we proceeded to educate ourselves on what we could do to prevent what we thought was a ridiculous proposal. Um, we learned that um, although there's a uh, zoned area um, for fraternities and sororities, if uh, a developer chooses not to call his development a fraternity or sorority, or if he says, oh, we won't rent to students, then um, suddenly people begin to question whether it's really a dormitory or not. But um, in fact, when you look at the type of construction that was proposed, where there was a bathroom for every bedroom, very small kitchenette area, very small living room, it was clear that all of the, the buildings were designed for student rentals. Um, we um, found out that uh, because the landowner was such a large company that did so much business in town that lawyers didn't want to work with us, environmentalists didn't want to work for us. Uh, most people felt that uh, because we were opposing the Coles, uh, the Coles company um, and their uh, uh, purchase and sale agreement that we were um, uh, ostracized from um, most general um, businesses in the country in the the area, we actually had to hire a lawyer out of um, uh, Eastern Mass in order to get legal representation. So I feel like um, um, I can work with a group and am very effective in bringing people together and in um, finding ways to deal with problems and still. Uh, arriving at adequate solutions. Thank you. Uh, question five, which is a little bit longer, so bear with me. Given that the planning board is the keeper of the master plan, what do you see as the planning board's role in achieving the goals of the master plan to encourage vitality in the downtown and village centers? And with that, we'll start with Mr. Marshall. So I confess to being a little bit puzzled by this question, <laughs> because when I looked at the master plan, I saw multiple goals, and uh, encouraging vitality in, down, in downtown and village center was only one of them. A number of the goals appeared to list, con potentially conflict with each other in practice. For instance, I know the townspeople have differed on whether some of the new developments in the center of town have, it, have advanced the goal of encouraging vitality in downtown and village centers, or threatened the goal of maintaining Amherst's existing community character. That said, I confess to heartily supporting the goal of taking steps to increase the vitality of Amherst's downtown and village centers. I understand that the planning board's formal role in development in, 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 in realizing this, this goal would be realized through the following actions would, that it's statutorily uh, uh, provided for. First, managing the process by which the master plans, master plans are developed or updated, proposing amendments to the, the zoning bylaw to advance the master plan's goals, approving site plan review applications and special permits, and conducting site plan reviews in, in areas where, that, where we're trying to encourage vitality. Obviously, it has other responsibilities related to subdivisions, but I'm not sure that really applies to any of the downtown or the uh, village centers. More broadly, I think the planning board's implicit role is first designing a public process that results in an accurate understanding of residents' values and priorities, including sometimes competing priorities. Second, keeping all of the master plan's goals in mind and carefully weighing those competing values and priorities as it weighs the issues before it. Third, conducting open and transparent processes that at least show everyone how the decisions were arrived at. And finally, working together as a group with the best interest of the town as their priority. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hirsch. Um, I confess I haven't read the entire master plan. It's quite a document, <laughs> but I have read a good bit of it. Um, and I think there's a little something for everyone in the master plan. And I think that that's one of the 
the um, both dangers and uh, advantages of the master plan when you're trying to build everyone together and get a consensus, you try and put things in it that will appeal to all the groups. Um, I think that um, the downtown Amherst has certainly increased its vitality with the new development there, but it, there's been a cost. Um, and obviously the cost is accessibility. I have a number of friends that don't go to restaurants downtown now because parking during the school year is so difficult. Um, they prefer to go to other outlying restaurants and things like that. So I think that we have a danger with, um, and we need to step back a minute, and, um, and I know that this is going on. We're looking at parking in, in town in general, but I think that that's one of the things that happens when we jump into the master plan and push development uh, faster than we uh, can assess the consequences of that development. Um, the master plan also talks about um, a lot of unique neighborhoods in town and, and that's one of the things that makes Amherst such a livable town and I heartily agree with that. I support the complete streets program as well. I think that adds to the vitality of the town and in general all citizens can benefit from that. Um, I would like to uh, focus on the other village centers as well. Now the North Amherst Village Center is pretty well developed and um, I'm really sorry to see that North Atkins is closing. It was something that I found very convenient and I'm somewhat shocked that they're closing before the uh, apartments even can fill up. But I think that um, that whole construction area is an example of what one of the village centers or the village centers can do to uh, improve its vitality and I'm anxious to see what's proposed in other village centers. Thank you. Mr. Greening? Can you give me a 30 second warning? I can, so give, you, I don't, I can give you a 30 second warning, <laughs> certainly. Because I have a lot here. Um, uh, the master plan is divided into 10 chapters. Seven of those chapters have goals. Um, each goal has a, a detailed set of objectives and strategies for implementing the goals. Downtown and village centers are mentioned uh, in two of the chapters, but it is reasonable to say that the vitality of those areas and the town are addressed in all seven goals of the master plan. In chapter 10, uh, implementation, the master plan outlines its own recommendations for realizing the goals and related objectives. Um, at a minimum, those recommendations should be followed. The master plan provides guidance, uh, I quote from the master plan, the master plan provides guidance for maintaining accountability, monitoring activities, creating appropriate development regulations and procedures, and involving the community in the implementation of the plan. Then there's a list, which I'll just read through quickly, provide resources for implementing the plan, monitor and evaluate the plan, involve a wide variety of stakeholders in the implementation, develop appropriate regulatory tools to implement the plan, require concurrence with the plan, and update the plan every five years. Um, strategy one, Strategy 2A is to form a Master Plan Implementation Committee, MPIC, to oversee the implementation of the Master Plan. This is a new, the new Master Plan Implementation Committee, this is from the Master Plan, something we haven't done, and I won't finish reading, but this is one of the things I'd like to see us do. Um, the planning board is well aware that no update has been done in 10 years, even though it's called for after five years. It is time to do that in its own right, and also because the town council has asked for that process to be completed as soon as possible, so the council will be in a position to accept and approve the updated plan. Having studied the master plan in modest detail, I find it a good plan, and I think it can be updated in both a thorough and timely manner, and I am up for that task. 
I was just about to give you your 30 seconds, but oh, you didn't I need didn't it. Oh, I didn't even need it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question six, and we'll start uh, with Mr. Hirsch. Are you comfortable working under open meeting law where all discussions and decisions are done in meetings posted at least 48 hours in advance and open to the public? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Greening? Not only am I comfortable with the open meeting law, I strongly support the operational guidelines of openness, transparency, and inclusion. Not only should the meetings be open to the public, they should be a reasonable measure of public comment period. Further, as far as reasonably possible, meetings should be videotaped and posted as soon as possible so people who are unable to attend can view the proceeding. Minutes should also be posted for public view in a timely manner. Furthermore, <clears throat> I think that Changing this interview process from one that is closed to one that is open to the public is a good idea and consistent with uh, our commitment to the open meeting law. Uh, although uh, seven questions is a reasonable number, the last two questions, I'm throwing this little <laughs> The last two questions can reasonably be answered in one word. <laughs> in the future, it might be useful to include standard practice questions like opening statement or closing statement or anything you would like to say that has not been covered in the questions asked. It is important that the interview committee, the council members who approve this position, and the entire community have a full and informed view of each candidate. Thank you. Mr. Marshall. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Prior to tonight's meeting, uh, we distributed to all uh, the interviewees a uh, committee handout that described uh, what the planning board does um, and some of the uh, various commitments, and including a time commitment. So question seven, which is our final question, are you comfortable with the time commitment and committee meeting schedule on the provided handout? And I believe we start with Mr. Greeny on this one. Uh, um, I fully understand that the regulatory and zoning work alone is a, a significant commitment of time. However, since I think that updating, monitoring, and implementing the master plan, launching new housing initiatives, and engagement of a broad coalition of participants of high importance, I am prepared for that additional time commitment that that will also require. A seven-member planning board can realistically accomplish only so much. It is not surprising it has not had time to carry out the implementation recommendations of the master plan itself. That is why it is important to engage Amherst's abundance of com concerned, committed citizens in the work. The establishment of a master plan implementation committee as recommended by the master plan strategy 1M2A should happen immediately. As a member of the planning board, I can help realize that important extension of the current board's work. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Marshall. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Hirsch. Um, yes, I, I do have some commitments on other nights of the week. Um, I'm uh, certainly available for um, the planning board on Wednesday nights. I'm also available on Tuesday nights. Mondays and Thursdays, I have commitments. So to be perfectly honest, I don't know exactly when the other committees that um, they ask assignments for meet, but I would have to check my schedule for those. Thank you. So I turn this off. So that completes our interview questions. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Mr. Greeny, Mr. Marshall, and Mr. Hirsch, uh, both for their willingness to serve, for being here tonight, and for bearing with us as we try out something that's never been done before uh, in this community. Uh, and so with that, I will adjourn this meeting of the Outreach Communications and Appointments Committee at 6.45 p.m. Thank you.